Hi guys, I haven't made a video for a while, but I've been me meaning to show you this for, uh, for quite some time. This is based on the work of John Martineau's little book, A Little Book of Coincidence in the Solar System, well worth a read. Uh, so what I've done is I've to, to see if he's right in, in what he says. I've gone to Wikipedia, I've taken the um, orbital speed of each planet, and it's it's time that it orbits the sun and that gives me a circumference that I can plot give a mean orbit All right, so what I've done here is with these for example this mercury orbit here the center one is the mean orbit so that's the actual distance the other two lines are the um, the apsis whether that's the right term, I think. So how close it goes to the sun and how far away it goes from the sun because it's actually travelling in a big ellipse. Uh, you can see with the Earth one, it's uh, it's a lot smaller. So the, um, the elliptical path around the sun is not as pronounced as Mercury, for example. And Venus is almost a, a perfect orbit, whereas Mars has got more of an elliptic orbit so it travels it moves closer to the sun and further away from its mean orbit but what what we find is that with um with mercury's orbit if we plot three circles just touching each other tangentially then those outer though well the tangent of that is the outer tangent of those circles fits perfectly in Venus's orbit. If we take a pentagram and plot it inside Earth's mean orbit, then we'll have two things fitting here for Mercury. One, the crossing points is Mercury's mean orbit, and it's uh, what's that peri periapsis? How close it goes to the sun? That orbit fits within the pentagon within the pentagram. And if we plot a square on Earth's, uh, what's it called Appy. Apoapsis. Anyway, Earth's apoapsis. We'll find that that will fall the inside, so uh, inscribed within the the square will be Venus's periapsis. Now these are just the three inner planets. This kind of geometry goes on, right on out. Uh, let's oh, yeah. turn on some other stuff. So out here, if we take a triangle within uh, Uranus's mean orbit, then Saturn's mean orbit inscribes within that triangle. And, uh, more layers here. He also describes how a 15-pointed star, so I'm assuming is that one, in Saturn's mean orbit, will inscribe Earth's orbit. It's pretty amazing. It seems that Earth is the uh, 
maybe not the centre of the solar system, but the geometrical centre of the solar system. Now this is an eight-pointed star. Uh, here we find Saturn inside Saturn's mean orbit, the eight, the crossing points of the eight-pointed star falls on Jupiter's mean orbit. Now that accuracy, the accuracy is, you know, it's not perfect, but it's it's in the high 90s. Most of the time it's in 99.5% accuracy. have I done there? Um, also found that uh, with a pentagonal recursion starting from inscribed mean orbit of Earth. Then we find pentagonal recursion falls on Mars's mean orbit. Um, Seems a lot to fall in a lot of the orbits. Not in a highly accurate way. But um, enough to be of interest. Anyway, we find that this, this pattern is not only two-dimensional, it also occurs three-dimensionally. Um, <coughs> such as in Martineau's book here. Find the orbits of Earth and Venus, Earth and Mars, sorry. To be a dodecahedron and an icosahedron. Also plotted out planets in a three dimensional shape that you might like to see. So thanks for watching.